I'm Daniel, this is Coralus, and today I'm talking about the JBO DCP 20,000. This is a monster of a pump, and most people probably wouldn't need a pump this big for your tank, but I'll tell you why I do. Um, not only do I have this as my return, but I kind of have the system pressurized a little bit because I do have ball valves under each refugium in each chamber, so that way I can control water flow. Those are big chambers and water does get stagnant you may not believe it but that's one of the reasons why I like the baffles and smaller systems large tanks have their own problems so we're talking about this pump today it is my review I have been using this for several months this is a monster of a pump and controller um, the only thing I will say about this thing is damn seriously if you, you feel this it's it's built like a tank. I don't know what the heck, why that controller needs to be so, so sturdy, but yeah, that controller is solid. So you can see I'm using this. Um, this whole pump is my return and my water flow for my frag system. So I have water flowing through those, and then there's holes drilled in there, which gives current to all the corals. Now I am testing this out. This is something new that I was working on. Um, one of the problems I have is. The larger the tank or the more frag tanks you have or more frags, it's just harder to take care of all those things. So that's one of the reasons why I love using a return pump to run your system. I don't like when people have six or seven pumps. When I started out um, in the beginning, every time I would get a new piece of equipment, it would end up with a plug and something and another pump under this, under here. But now what I can do is you can run all those reactors off of that one pump. So this is in my return line too as well, and that's nice. So there's my carbon and GFO, and makes things a lot easier. So anyway, that's just my quick review. I've been happy with this pump. Um, so far, it is pretty massive, and I will keep you guys up to date on that. Um, so I do need to get a backflow I drilled a hole in there for now because what would happen is if that pump shut off I do have a backup generator which will kick the power on but for any reason that pump didn't kick back on the water would siphon so I drilled a hole in there to prevent the siphon but it's just creating air bubbles and it's not as not as good as I thought it would be I thought it was gonna be under the water line um, but but it's not, so I am going to put in a flapper there to stop backflow, and that's something that's important as well, because if you siphon and you have your corals up top, or if you've ever had a tank, or you're setting something up and you just quite can't figure it out in the beginning, um, you'll find out shortly. Auto top-offs, if you have your power on some of those systems people have a bucket and the hose will actually form a loop and will drain your tank so be careful with those things um, yeah so that's just my ramble I didn't really plan for this I do notice that if I don't do product reviews or if I don't do my regular um, videos that catch people's eyes you don't get as many views so it is important for me to educate you guys and to just ramble, but um, sometimes it's content over quality, and I'm sorry if you guys feel you're not getting the quality I normally offer you, but due to the store opening and me being shorthanded, I am rushing around to get all this stuff done for you guys. So that's one of the reasons why I tested this out. We are putting frag tanks in the store and I really want to plumb everything for high flow. So I may just have some super duper pumps and then we'll just have maybe some half inch lines uh, drilled in the back of the tank. So we'll basically have a pipe, instead of being in the tank, it'll come out the back and either be drilled for a closed loop system. So 
I love when you guys listen to me because it is so nice to get your feedback and your help. Um, lately, I've been very fortunate to have a few of you watch my videos and send me information. So, one of the things I needed information on the other day was tempered glass. And one of the reasons why I didn't do a live stream yet for this is I don't have the diamond bits. I haven't had a chance to go pick them up. So I am, and it's funny, every time I change a design or, you know, alter one thing, it affects everything. So you have to realize that engineers, when they're coming together with systems, everything has to be thought out ahead of time, which is why the store is so tough for me because I'm OCD and I love every detail thought out ahead of time. And I decided for this sand waterfall, which we're going to do in this tank, a beautiful sand waterfall in an enemy tank, um, is that I'm going to do a center drain. Now, we've come to the conclusion that this isn't tempered glass and it shouldn't explode on me. So I am going to drill up through the bottom and put in not only a one inch drain, but I'm also going to come up through the bottom and put the return line. So I'm going to have the return line is going to collect all that sand in the bottom and go up top and cause that waterfall and that sand shootout. So it's going to run back down, collect back here. As the water pumps up, it'll collect the sand, take it to the top, and that waterfall will go forever. Now, aside from that, I have to have the drain for the tank, and that'll come up all the way through the top. So I'm going to have to somehow make a PVC piece in the top so the drain extends over the waterfall. That's going to, that'll be interesting. So maybe I'll make it look like a rock and the waterfall's coming out the bottom. But since I decided for that center pipe, now my lights that are here, I had a Chinese black box that was gonna go right across here. I've decided to not use that light if I'm gonna drill through. And then the only problem with this tank is I'm gonna have to drill through the bottom here and put in a train as well down to this tank. So we're really making this tank complicated by adding in an extra sump. But this one's gonna be the refugium. You know, all our macroalgae and copepods and stuff will be in there and maybe some sand, whatever we put in there. And then down here, we got the protein skimmer, the sock if we need it. We'll have a carbon reactor, maybe some GFO if we feel it's necessary. Um, but that'll be the reactor and stuff. So getting that return line, past that other tank. So I'm gonna to have to bring a return line up here, out the side, between those that wood, all the way up the side, and then under here. So it'll be fun. It's definitely gonna be a challenge. Um, I always try to make everything look pretty. One of my biggest problems is being OCD is that I take too much time in the beginning and on a project that I'll probably never even use again. So I'll th overthink something and then waste my time. But one of the be beautiful things about YouTube is you guys can help me shed some of that time by thinking with me. So I do appreciate that. Um, it's been really awesome. So we will work on that stage next. Um, I am going to run to the gym and work out. It always helps clear my head when I do that. But I wanted this tank just to be able to be seen now. Instead of a palinsa, palinsa, ah, peninsula tank, I'm gonna do it so you can see it from all the way around four sides. So, one of the cool things we're doing at the store is all the power will be dropped from the ceiling and we're gonna have seaweed and different things hiding our cords. So, I could basically put a tank anywhere and I want the cords to come out the top. So, I'm gonna start making things that are a little bit different, you know? I saw a company that made a really cool custom trim that went up the side and you could hide your wires in the trim. So that's a good idea, you know? But, all right, so that's that for now, guys. Um, I appreciate your feedback on that. I did paint another layer on my bubble tip anemone. Um, it is really fun, like I said, in my spare time now, I am painting. So every day I do something different to this painting, um, just to accent it. And it, it's gonna take a lot of time and a lot of layers. But that is my Colorado Sunburst anemone bubble tip uh, painting, whatever you want to call it. So, all right, guys, there's that. Thank you for watching. As always, happy reefing. Thanks for sticking around if you did till the end. 
I do appreciate it. Um, I did get my first Patreon supporter uh, the other day, and I, I don't know if he wants me to give him a shout out and, and put him on blast, but it feels good to have someone support you, and I'm hoping that'll keep growing. So we're trying to start the trend. Anyone who knows having a retail fish store is really tough, and that's what we're going for right now. We're building a new store, and we're putting a lot into it. And really comes down to you guys. I mean, I'm doing this for you. I can't stay open if we don't keep this trending. So uh, I appreciate tagging us, uh, posting, reviews, anything that you guys can do. Just spread the word. You know, this is an awesome hobby, bringing people together. So there's all that. And those of you who did stick around and who are going to, I'll show you the Polydarium, Polydarium tank, um, Polydarium, if I can say that correctly, correctly, I can't speak today, I swear, <laughs> so, yep, there's the monster tank, the only thing I regret is this isn't in my office. I wish this tank was in my office. It is absolutely stunning. I do have to get a fan for the top. Um, the guy who built this tank said, if I put a fan in the top, it would keep it from fogging up like that um, with the misters, because they just spray all over. You have to keep the plants wet. It's like a rainforest in there. Very cool. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up and share it with a friend. And thank you for being part of the Coralus community.